Welcome to the Wear Wag Repeat Podcast. I'm Tori Mystic. As a dog mom lifestyle expert, blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. Welcome to another solo episode of the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I am your host, Tori Mystic, and today I'm excited to talk about something related to being a pet influencer. Um, So I talk all the time about how I'm a member of all kinds of Facebook groups for dog influencers and pet bloggers and dog moms and just Labrador lovers and all kinds of Facebook groups. And I love looking at those Facebook groups to see what the most common questions are because they can be really great blog posts. And for today, they make a really great podcast episode. I'm going to talk to you about how to find the right brands for pet influencer collaborations. So I'll talk to you about how to uh, identify what kind of brands would be a good fit for you, how to research brands that are open to influencer campaigns, and also how to reach out to them and kind of seal the deal, if you will. So let's start off with the the first thing, which is not even really related to the brands at all. So it's really important that we do the foundational work in order to have success as a pet influencer. So the most important thing that I think that you want to do as you as you are kind of trying to figure out how you could do brand collaborations, maybe become an ambassador um, and get paid to post about brands and products, the most important thing to do is to figure out what your own brand values are. Get really clear on those. And yes, even if it's just you and your dog behind your account, you have brand values. You want to ask yourself, what is important to you? Um, Do you value things that are locally made? Uh, Are you really involved in your local community? Do you value certain social causes? Maybe you are a big supporter of Black Lives Matters um, or another social movement that's going on. Um, You want to get really clear with, with what's important to you. And once you are clear on that, then you'll be able to get a better idea of what brands might be good partners for you. So I've seen this come up not just in pet groups, but there's another Um, Facebook group that I'm a part of that's just regular influencers, all kinds of lifestyle, fashion, cooking, parenting, all kinds of influencers. And I saw someone post in there that, um, you know, they were like, how do you pick out what brands to approach? And someone said, well, what brands do you use most frequently? That's a good place to start. And a woman responded and said, I don't, not really loyal to any brand. I just shop for the best price. That's what's most important to me. And so she's like, I don't real, I'm not loyal to anyone. I don't know who to reach out to because I just go for the best deal. So I uh, replied to her actually, and this really kind of clicked for her was that if her values are price and getting the most affordable price on something, then she might want to approach a brand who shares that value. For instance, Walmart is all about everyday values and the best prices. Costco is all about the best prices. Tuesday morning and TJ Maxx, they're all about getting great deals and great prices. So those could be brands that she might want to reach out to because they share the same values of having, um, you know, price being very important to them and having low prices be really important to them. So even if you aren't if you don't consider yourself loyal to a certain brand, you might be loyal to a certain value or a certain viewpoint. Um, for this woman, it was low prices. So, so she could reach out to brands who also share that viewpoint. Um, from a from a pet influencer perspective, I put a lot of effort into the brands that I collaborate with, and I never ever want to collaborate with someone that doesn't share my values. Um, I have built up quite a large platform, and what you know, one of the side effects of that is that I also open myself up to a lot of criticism. To be honest with you, so I have gotten comments from people when I have promoted products or brands that don't really align with me. Uh, Maybe when I was first starting off, uh, I would 
take any paid opportunity because I was just excited for the opportunity and, and, and to make some money. And I didn't really realize how important the brand values were. And I've gotten a lot of criticism over the years from other people who said, I can't believe you would talk about that. I can't believe you give your dog those treats. I can't believe you do this. And it became really clear to me that I need to research the brands that I am partnering with. And before I say yes, or before I even reach out to them, I need to know that what is important to them is also important to me. So for instance, one of the brands that I work with is Stella and Chewy's. I love so many things about them. (laughs) This episode is not sponsored by them in any way, but I just want to illustrate why I'm so loyal to them. It's a female-founded company. They're based in the U.S. They come up with really creative marketing ideas, but also their food is really high quality. Uh, I don't feed my dogs raw, but Stella and Chewy's has a bunch of freeze-dried raw options. I know that raw um, is a really healthy, the choice for your dogs. Um, I just am not quite there yet. Um, but I, I know that Stella and Chewy sees that and that they understand nutrition and how important it is. They also made a move this year to make all of their bags recyclable which I think is amazing because the pet industry has so much waste. Um, And if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know I've been interviewing a lot of sustainable pet bosses lately. And then I also love that Stella and Chewy's this year during the COVID-19 pandemic, they donated thousands and thousands of pounds of food to the ASPCA. And they just do a lot of really great work in local communities. The month of November, they also sponsored senior pet adoptions up to $80,000, which is just crazy. Um, And the founder, the company is named after her two senior dogs, Stella and Chewy were senior dogs when she got them. So as you can see, like our values and what's important to us is like almost exactly parallel. (laughs) I almost couldn't design a better partnership. So that's just one example. And that's why I'm so loyal to them. But when I'm looking at other brands and and other people approach me uh, and I go to their website and they don't really have a very good about page, I'll just ask them in an email, you know, what's important to you? Um, Some of the things that are important to me are female founded companies, sustainability, and, you know, encouraging experiences over possessions or, you know, something like that. I'll come up with like a little elevator pitch of what's important to me and make sure that that brand really gets it. Um, And if it's a brand that it appears to me that they're not interested in the environment, they um, are not interested in supporting anything local, and they don't care about the quality of their ingredients, um, that would be a definite no-go for me. If you're struggling to grow your Instagram account, you might feel like you're actually losing money. Managing your account is taking valuable time away from your business, and let's be honest, it's taking time away from your dog. Most of the advice out there from so-called Instagram experts is either too common sense or so unclear that you can't figure out how to make it work for you. That's because it's not designed for pet people. In my online course, Instagram Strategy for the Pet Obsessed, aka Inspo, I'll teach you how to create a posting schedule and stick with it, proven strategies to boost engagement, how to work with influencers or even become one, plus tech trainings that reveal hidden tricks inside the app. This might be the only Instagram course that tells you to spend less time on Instagram. That's because it's created by a dog mom. And I know all we really want at the end of the day is to spend more time with our dogs. Go to wearwagrepeat.com slash inspo to learn more. Hurry up because I have some great bonuses and they are going to expire soon. That is wearwagrepeat.com slash I-N-S-P-O. Recently, when I was looking at one of these Facebook groups, um, there was a thread that said, what are your dream collaborations? And I love this topic. I love to dream big and think big and think of my dream brand collaboration. For me, 
it would be Petco. I would love to not just collaborate with them on an Instagram post, but to have a collection of wear, wag, repeat products available at Petco stores. Now, I think this is a realistic dream because I know that they have partnered with other influencers and bloggers on similar product lines, and they do a lot of collaborations throughout the year on um, gift things. They recently started carrying um, some novelty gifts like coffee mugs and ring dishes and stuff like that that I think would align really well with the Wear, Wag, Repeat brand. Now, why do I want to work with Petco and not another big box pet store? Because Petco recently, I think last year in 2019, they removed all products with artificial ingredients off of their shelves. And they're really into high quality ingredients and safety for our pets. They're also really into the environment. And I just think they're a wonderful corporate business um, with a lot of corporate responsibility, and they really care about our pets and our planet. So that's why Petco would be my ideal brand collaboration. But in this thread, I saw a lot of other comments from people saying um, they would love to work with PetSmart or Petco, Dyson or Bissell, Kong, Chewy, all kinds of brands. I'm not saying any of those are good or bad or whatever, but they're very, very different. Personally, I don't see how you could want to partner with PetSmart and Petco because I think that their brand values are very different. Also, you know, everyone wants to work with Dyson. However, I know that Bissell actually has the Bissell Pet Foundation and that for every single Bissell vacuum sold, they donate to a pet charity. So they do a ton of stuff for pets. Um, and Kathy Bissell is always out there, you know, the, the face of the company. I like having a woman as the face of the company, whereas Dyson has, um, you know, the guy who founded it as the face of the company. So again, I don't see how you could want to partner with Bissell and Dyson because they seem to have very different brand values from one another. And I'm not saying that one is better or worse than the other, but I know which one I would choose. Now, the next step in figuring out which brands would be a good collaboration for you is to see if that brand even does influencer content. So one of the examples that people said I would love to work with them is Kong. And Kong, even though I use them every single day, and I'm sure many of us do use them on a very regular basis, they don't do a lot of influencer content. They don't even really post a whole lot on their own Instagram account. So I'm not sure that they would be the best brand to target because they're just not in the mindset of working with influencers. You might want to look for another brand. Maybe Westpaw is really great because they also are into influencers environmental causes and all their products are made in Bozeman, Montana. So they have really, really clear brand values, in my opinion. Um, And I have seen that Westpaw does, you know, work with influencers and maybe they have an affiliate program or something like that. So as you're doing this research, check out these brands on Instagram, see if they do work with influencers. A good way to find that is to look through their feed and see if they are resharing photos um, from influencers and see who's tagged in the photo. Go to their account, try to find the original photo and see if they used anything like hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored in their original post. And that would be a really good indicator that they were compensated in some way for their post with that brand. So that brand has an active influencer marketing program that you might be able to become a part of. So as you have, um, you know, fine-tuned your list and narrowed it down and seen the brands that share your values and that also have an active influencer marketing program, The next step in outreach would be to kind of start flirting with them on Instagram. And I love to use this analogy because even though I'm very terrible at dating (laughs) romantically, I think I'm pretty good at it on social media and especially when it comes to influencer stuff. So start flirting with the brand on Instagram. And by that, I mean commenting on their posts, liking their photos, responding to their Instagram stories, just kind of, you know, 
getting their attention, making sure that they see you and know that you exist. That's what flirting is, right? So you might want to mention them in your own Instagram stories as you're using their products and just kind of get it to the point where you feel like you're on a first name basis with them, or at least they would maybe recognize who you are. Then once you've gotten there, and that could maybe take a couple of weeks or maybe longer, um, then you might want to reach out to them and ask them if they do uh, any influencer work and who would be the best person for you to reach out to about that kind of stuff. You can totally send that as a DM to somebody. Um, I think that, you know, it's a little bit unprofessional to send a whole pitch out to a DM. But if you wanted to DM the account and say, you know, who would be the best person to reach out to about influencer marketing, I think that is totally something that is normal and acceptable to do. Another thing you could do if you're not really keen on DMing the brand directly or just not really feeling like that's a good thing to do is you can look on some of the influencer networks out there like Aspire IQ or Activate, and you can see if this brand is on any of those influencer networks. That could be a way that you just apply. You don't, if you're, if you're nervous or don't want to confront anyone, that's a very like safe way to apply for something. Um, and you won't really get a no, you'll just get a nothing <laughs> unless it's a yes. Um, but I have seen several different pet brands on there. And speaking of dice, and I have seen Dyson on there um, and seen some other influencers who I know use those influencer networks working with brands like that. So um, I'm just going to keep this episode short today um, since I think I just kind of got to the point, but I just want to refresh and review what I just described to you. So if you are a pet influencer or an aspiring pet influencer and you really want to start working with brands and you have an idea of your dream brands, I want to make sure that before you finalize that list that you are really clear on your own brand values and what is important to you. You might have to do a little bit of soul searching to get clear on this, but identify what your values are. Maybe put together a small, short little mission statement about what's important to you. This might find a home somewhere on your Instagram bio in some way, shape, or form. Um, And I think that these values should also come across in your Instagram content kind of organically in their own way. But figure out what your values are and then go back to that list of your dream brands that you want to work with and do some research and see if they share the same values that you do. And remember to think outside the box with that example that I shared about the woman who said, I'm not really loyal to any brand. All I care about is getting the best deal. Well, there are brands who also care about getting the best deal. So you just have to think a little bit outside the box. And I think by looking at their values versus your values, it's a really, really good way to find brands that would be just organic, natural fits for partners with you. Once you do figure out that list, go ahead and reach out to them or start flirting with them on social media or start looking for them on influencer networks. And I know that if you follow these steps, it will just be a matter of time until you have landed your dream partnership for your Instagram account. So I hope that this was really helpful to you. If you want to learn more about um, being an Instagram influencer, I actually have a super thorough online course called Inspo. That is Instagram strategy for the pet obsessed. And there's a whole module with three or four lessons in it about becoming a pet influencer. I've actually taken real agreements and contracts and email threads that I've had with brands. And I blacked out any personal information but I shared those in PDFs in this course. So you can actually see exactly what I said to brands in order to land pretty, um, you know, pretty profitable deals with some of them. So go check that out at wherewagrepeat.com slash courses, um, or reach out to me on Instagram. And that's Lucy telling me that it's time to stop recording this episode. (laughs) So come find us on Instagram at tmystic. You can say hi to Lucy and you can ask me any questions that you have about being a pet influencer. What did you like most about this episode? 
Find me on Instagram at teamistic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog-inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wearwagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.